Okay, they're here. Well, thank you. Super I'm sorry I missed um, a good chunk of that uh, previous session, uh, but I'm glad I got to hear the uh, last part of it because I'm going to make the argument that we have to start with STEM education during the preschool years. So just don't enter it at the kindergarten level. Let's bring it down to um, the real STEMists because uh, it's these young children who are natural scientists, technologists, engineers, and mathematicians. Uh, I think it's us adults who have a difficult time thinking of them that way. And so I wanted to share some of the work that we've been doing at uh, Sesame Workshop through Sesame Street. Um, first, I sh should tell you Sesame Workshop is a nonprofit educational organization uh, making meaningful uh, differences in the lives of children around the world, uh, meeting the needs, their critical educational uh, needs, as well as their health needs and their social development needs. Um, it all begins with what I call the whole child curriculum. Our mission is to, is to use media to create educational content uh, to help children grow smarter, stronger, and kinder. Um, smarter is defined not only by the academic skills, those, those important literacy, math, and science skills, and we could talk about what, what I will be talking about is STEM and STEAM. Uh, but also those very important executive function self-regulation skills, those cognitive processing skills, which play a critical role in STEM education uh, as well. The data are in. The data show that, yes, we, we know that we have a problem, um, and we know that our students are underperforming. And um, even within um, preschool education, we know we could do a, um, a lot more. And what's sad for me as the educator uh, um, at Sesame Workshop is that we know that it's during these preschool years that it's so pivotal for us to lay the important foundational skills. And we know that um, they are, as I said, they are natural uh, STEMists, and I hope you like the term that I, I just created. Um, <laughs> I've been using it a lot, and people seem to, to like it. Um, and we should be enhancing their curiosity about the world and laying those foundational skills. Unfortunately, it's um, not happening in preschool education. It's not happening in the classrooms. Uh, a very small percentage of time is devoted to uh, science, un unfortunately. And those educators who know that they can do it, we actually see positive results. So if they're using uh, proven curricula uh, within the STEM fields, um, they know that it has an educational impact. And the children are increasing in their scientific inquiry skills as well as their uh, overall foundational um, knowledge in, in terms of, of concepts. Um, the problem is, and I heard it earlier in the panel, is that men and women, mostly women, who go into early childhood education are choosing this field because they feel they don't have to teach science and, and math. They know that they have to teach literacy and language, but you know they could get by with, with science uh, and, and math. So they don't have the knowledge, and most importantly, they don't have the confidence. And that's where Sesame Workshop comes in, Sesame Street, um, because we feel that through our content, we could provide that knowledge to the adults in their lives. So we think you may think of us as just providing content for children, but if you're watching Sesame Street and you're engaging in our content across our media platforms, you'll realize that you can learn a lot along the way as your child is, is learning. Um, Gary Nell is here, our former uh, CEO of Sesame Workshop, and uh, he gave me a big challenge uh, back in season 40. We're currently on air with season 46 uh, to really get kids um, more involved in getting outdoors, to create um, a science and nature curriculum. And this was a lot of fun for me, and we had a great time. We know that children weren't getting out. And another piece of data that um, uh, we gathered is that um, we had a hypothesis that maybe children who were living in the inner cities weren't getting outside, and therefore uh, that was one of the reasons for their limited science knowledge. And that children who lived in the suburbs or lived in rural uh, America Still we're getting out. outside yeah. more and um, through those experiences we're gaining more scientific knowledge. 
The data came back, and it was sad. Uh, it didn't matter where you lived in America. Uh, preschool, <laughs> preschoolers didn't have much uh, science um, uh, knowledge. So that inspired us even more to create uh, the curriculum and to create great content. Uh, we, as we create our uh, content, we involve many advisors. And uh, that first year, they gave us high marks on what we call scientific exploration. And they said, you know, we would like to challenge you more to do more of scientific investigation. And then that really put us on this wonderful trajectory of thinking about incorporating more of the scientific inquiry skills. And um, then we graduated to STEM because I felt during the preschool years, we don't separate content buckets. You don't say, okay, now we're doing science, and now we're doing math, and now we're doing engineering. It's an integrated curriculum. And how we integrate it is through the scientific uh, inquiry process skills. Um, and then the challenge came, well, what about the arts? And that was a wonderful experience for us because we re realized that during these young years, the arts are a wonderful tool for us to explore STEM education. So uh, we quickly moved to um, STEAM. Um, to illustrate all of these uh, scientific inquiry skills, um, the writers and the producers gave me uh, quite a bit of a challenge because they uh, chose Grover at, to be the spokesperson for STEM education. <laughs> now, those of you who know Grover, and he's actually my favorite, my uh, favorite character, <laughs> Uh, he's got great heart. He really tries his best effort, but he often fails, right? Uh, and I said, oh my goodness, when, how am I going to be successful in, 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 in uh, teaching children about these skills when he's failing all the time? And the advisors came back very quickly and reassured me that that's the whole point of scientific inquiry. <laughs> it's trial and error. You have to try, and you're probably going to fail. It's what you do with those failures. It's how you learn from, from um, the data that you're collecting during uh, the, the trial and error that you can come up with uh, this big idea. And uh, Super Grover does come up with the big idea at the end with the help of his friends. And that's another piece of STEM education is the importance of collaboration. So here's an example of a STEAM story um, that we did uh, called Lifting Snuffy. It was a wonderful opportunity for Zoe, uh, our female Muppet, to be a choreographer and to uh, do a, a new uh, ballet dance. And Snuffy got very excited because who knew? His dream was to one day be a ballet dancer and to leap across the stage. Um, well now we have a STEM problem or a STEAM problem. How are we going to get Snuffy to leap up in the air to be uh, a, a part of this ballet dance? Well, he was going to give up, and then his friends encouraged him that, no, no, we could figure this out. So there was lots of trial and error. But during that process, we experimented with different ways to lift this very heavy, woolly mammoth type character. Um, we failed along the way, but we learned about levers and pulleys. We have a, an engineering problem. We have to design something, right, because they tried to lift him and that wasn't going to happen. Um, they, used, tried, they used a lever. That didn't, that didn't work. So they did design an uh, elaborate system with pulleys so that on cue they were able to, uh, they rigged him up and they were able to lift him so that he could leap uh, and be a part of the dance. Another important um, point that I'm trying to make this morning is that the adults in children's lives play such a critical role. And in order for us to bring these concepts to an age-appropriate level so that they can learn these foundational skills, context is key. And it has to be placed in a familiar experience. What's fortunate here is that, as I mentioned, preschoolers are engaging in these familiar experiences. They don't have any issues or phobias. They, they, they want yeah, to learn. Right. That's their, they want to have those hands-on experiences and, and learn. 
we have to give them the language and structure these scientific processes. Unfortunately, many adults in their lives don't have this language, and so that's where we come in to model the language and model the, the experiences. Another important message is that it's okay if an adult doesn't have the answer to a child's question. We have to get over that as well. We have to say, that's a great question. Let's find out together, right? Most parents get nervous. They feel like, oh my goodness, my, my child may know more than, than, <laughs> than I do. I never even, even thought about asking such a question. And the same is true, unfortunately, in preschool education. So it is our content that uh, provides these great learning opportunities uh, and to uh, inspire confidence in all learners regarding STEM, STEM concepts. So we got busy. Uh, we created quite a bit of, of content over the years. Uh, it was a focus for, for many years for us. Uh, we created street stories. We created a, um, a Super Grover 2.0 format where we actually engaged in STEM education, um, where he would have to deal with a problem uh, with his superpowers, such as the power of in observation and the power of investigation. Um, we took Murray, we have an, uh, a new character, on the street. And we did science experiments on the street. And we did it on the, on, on the streets of New York City, I should say, not on <laughs> Sesame Street, the streets of New York City. And we did it because we wanted to bring it into the real world to show that everyone can be a STEMist. And um, those were the, the science experiments. The problem I had is that I would come to uh, groups like this and conferences and meetings, and I would tell everyone we have this great science or STEM content or STEAM content, and they would say, well, how do we find it? Because if you weren't taping Sesame <laughs> and watching it on a daily basis, you, you wouldn't see it. So through uh, generous funding from CA Technologies and Bechtel and Heising Simons, we were able to create a digital STEM hub. Now what's wonderful about this STEM hub is that we took all the content we created, both linear and interactive games, um, and placed them around these, um, categorized them around these six um, domains or concepts. And um, we are featuring Abby as well as Elmo because it's so important to encourage girls into the field of, of STEM and STEAM. And um, below the fold, I don't know if there's another, uh, no, below the fold, uh, what's really important is that we then provided hands-on experiences for parents and teachers to take these concepts and turn them into hands-on activities. So we didn't want to just leave it in the digital world. We wanted to bring it into the real world so that they could practice uh, these, these skills and learn these concepts. Um, one component are the mobile games. And I, I added this slide because I wanted to highlight the power of media when you're using it as an educational tool. The sink and float game came to my attention because uh, the producer didn't want to just do your typical, does this sink or float, you know, which we tend to do yeah. on, the, on the surface of the water. Uh, the producer said, well, since it's a digital game, can we have the character be swimming in the water and take that item while we're in the water to see if it's going to sink further to the bottom of the of the of the um, of the of the floor, or float to the top, and I said, you know what? I never thought about that. And what a wonderful opportunity to use a digital game to get that perspective, because children are not going to have that perspective. They're not going to be going in water and, and, and doing a sink yeah, and yeah. float uh, experiment. So that's just a little plug for how we could use um, no. technology in a different way to provide a different uh, experience. So. And so I guess my challenge yes. to all of you, and one of the challenges that I would love for you to consider, is how do we reach and embrace the adults in the lives of very young children? And how do we get people in the field, such as yourselves, 
to start thinking younger than kindergarten. Because I, when I come to conferences like this, and I'm, and I'm grateful that you invited me so that I could give you this challenge, is that don't wait for kindergarten. Yeah. We can go earlier. They are the real STEMists, and it's the adults that we have to transform. And that's my challenge to you. How do we reach them and transform them? Thank you very much. This was exciting. I love Super Grover. <laughs>